Hi, I'm Londa. Subscribe to my channel here on YouTube to save yourself money and to get rid of any and all stress as you learn my how-tos for creative sewing. One thing no home sewer wants is for her things to scream loving hands made at home look. We want them to look just as good as if they were purchased in a really nice store. One of the um, waistline finishes that I've seen frequently, and this has been in fashion for quite a few years, is the comfort of an elastic waist, but where it's actually stitched through. You wouldn't guess that I had made these, would you? Mm -hmm. So this is using Sport Elastic. It's commonly available. Here it is from Stretch Right. I sell this at my website, but on it, it says Knit Sport Elastic. And the thing about Sport Elastic is that it has these channels. Now I can guarantee you that as I did this stitching, and I'll show you how I do it, that I did not manage to get my stitching in those channels. That's not really the most important thing about it. It's just that the construction of this Sport Elastic allows for being stitched through and creating that look. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna show you all my secrets on how to apply Sport Elastic. The first question is, how much length of Sport Elastic do you want to use? My answer is just so tight that you can hardly get it up and down over your bum. So what you're going to do is you're going to pull this around your butt <laughs> and make it really tight just so that you can get it up and down. And then cut that, make a note of how much it is, and that's what you're going to go with. Now, the world will now know my hips are about 42 inches, my waist around 30 but I use 26, 27 inches of this. I can take that much length of this sport elastic held together and I can get that stretched up and down over my butt, which is what you have to be able to do as you're creating pants. All right, that being said, let me also throw in that it seems to me from my past experience, and I've in my shop taught classes with this, making these types of pants for, oh, I don't know how many years we taught those. Um, they were called the $1,700 pants, an invention by Louise Cutting. Thank you, Louise. Anyway, um, it seemed like the larger the person, the bigger amount less than their hips, we did elastic. I remember one student who had like a 45 inch waist and we actually took 13 inches less of elastic in order to make this work out right. The thing that you have to realize is that as you stitch through elastic, as you stitch through any elastic, whether it has channels or not, whether you hit the channels or not, it's going to make the elastic stretch out. So that's the true thing that we're dealing with here. All right, all that being said, I have on my garment, and I chose to do this on a knit this time. Both of these garments are wovens, but knits are just so prevalent that I decided to do my sample on a knit. What I did was as I pressed in this fold, two inches, right here at the fold, I clipped into the seam allowance. Let me do that again here at the other end so that I can show you. In knits, we very rarely press seam allowances open. Instead, we press them one direction. So you see I snipped in so that then as I folded it down, I have balanced the bulk between this side and this side. So now I'm going to have one, two, three, four layers and one, two, three, four layers rather than if I hadn't clipped it and folded it down. Now I would have two layers and one, two, six layers. All right. Does it make sense? Yes. Why you want to balance the bulk. That's one principle that I teach a lot of in my DVD on sewing on knits called Stretching Your Knit Sewing Know-How, and I'll have a link to that down below this video. All right, so I had pressed under two inches, and what I did was I just came along the very top. I set my stitch length to three and a half, and guiding the edge of the fold right along the side of the foot with the longer stitch length, I went all the way around the top. What that's going to do is give this little ruffle effect at the top. Now a benefit to that is that through the years I have found that elastic riding against a stitching line is a better plan than elastic riding against the fold of fabric. When elastic rides right against the top fold of the fabric, believe me, eventually that 
fabric is going to wear out. You wouldn't have to have this much of a ruffle at the top. You could stitch even closer to the edge, but in general, if elastic rides next to stitching rather than a fold of fabric, it's going to give longer life to your garment. So that's what I've done at this point. Now I'm going to take the elastic. It's one and a quarter inches wide. And I'm going to lay it up here next to the stitching, but not right next to it. I'm going to give it a little room. You want it to have a little room to move in there. And then I'm going to bring it all over and again give it a little room. Put my needle down in position. Now, this is probably hiding in your accessory box. This is the most wonderful little gizmo. It's called a quilting guide. You could do the same type of thing with just a post note, but I have now created a guide. And I'm going to be watching the guide as I sew rather than the needle. So now I don't need the elastic in here anymore because I've already judged the distance away that I'm going to be stitching. So I'm about all the way around now with this second row of stitching. And when I'm doing something like this, what I want to do is just overstitch. I don't backstitch when I start, I just overstitch a couple of stitches. And that secures both the beginning and the end. Support your work as you pull it out and give it a haircut. Okay. Londa, you didn't leave a hole. <laughs> You're right, Melanie, I didn't. What I like to do is just at that point come back and rip this seam allowance right here. So I've just opened this up and now I have a hole. Does that make you feel better? Yes. <laughs> okay. Now, look here. I do not take a big old safety pin and just grab this much of the elastic because believing that's going to destroy the elastic. Do you see how I have woven this big old safety pin in and out, in and out? All right. Now I'm ready to feed it through. I tell my little girls this is like a snake and he's crawling through a hole in the dirt. I got to get him going. And the big thing is to work very hard at not letting this twist. The best thing I've ever found is a big old safety pin. There's not such things as diaper pins around anymore, are there, Melanie? <laughs> no, there are not. <laughs> oh, you young gals just don't know what you're missing. All right. So, do you see how I have to work that through? Okay, so here's the snakey. There he is. We're going to pull him on through. We've got to carefully scooch this down. But I want to be careful that I don't pull this end through. Correct? So, I'm going to place a pin right here. So, I'm not going to lose this end. Next, what I'm going to do is take and butt these ends together. I'm not going to lap them, I'm going to butt them. And I'm going to do that on a little piece of fabric. What I've done is I have found just a little piece of fabric. Woven is better than a knit. You can use a little piece of sew-in stabilizer if you like. I usually just go down into my trash can. I have now set my machine on zigzag. And I am just going to really get this attached. So there's one side. Now I'm going to get the other side, making sure it's not twisted. And it's also not twisted within the channel. And now that I have hold of it, and I know it's not twisted, I'm going to butt, B-U-T-T. Little girls that I teach think that's just the funniest word. So now I'm going to zigzag it. I learned this technique from Nancy Zeman. Bless her heart, years ago she brought so much to our sewing world. We all miss her. So do you see the ends are butted? They're not going to go anywhere. And now I am very carefully trimming away any excess to that piece of fabric. So do you see that this is a nice application rather than lapping and having the bulk of lapped elastic? All right, so now what we want to do, I 
for some reason I call it snap the turtle. <laughs> you just need to get all of this excess fabric distributed evenly on the elastic. Does that all make sense so far? Yes. All right. Now what we want is two rows of stitching yet in here. So I'm going to just visually divide this distance using two pins. I'm not going to measure it and do the math, heaven forbid. Okay, it looks like that would be pretty good. So right here, I'm going to put my needle down in. I'm going to adjust my post note or my Get it tight. All right. Now, the other thing you want to do is somewhere in here, because you've got it evenly adjusted, you might want to put through a couple of pins just so that you don't let this fabric crawl ahead, because you're going to see it's going to want to crawl ahead. All right. You have to stretch and sew all at the same time. And notice, too, that I've got the wrong side of the fabric up because the feed dogs are going to feed the bottom through better than at the top. Even with my dual feed engaged, and you might want to use that walking foot if you were doing this, the pressure of the presser foot is still going to want to creep this fabric along. So you have to be aware of that. But knowing that, that's why I have the right side or the pretty side down to the feed dogs. You want to engage needle down. Whoops, and you want it on straight stitch. That's probably a good thing that it did that. Okay, so back to straight stitch. Now, my eye is not on the needle. My eye is on the guide. So do you see that I've stretched everything? Oh my word, I sewed over a pin. I admit that in one of my videos as well. Did the sewing police come and got me? Nope. Is my sewing machine still working? Mm -hmm. Sure is. All right. If it makes you feel better, I could stop and take out the pin. Do what works for you. But do you see how important it is to actually stretch? I'm not watching the needle. Instead, my eye is right here. So here I am back about where I started. And you won't have those few zigzags because you'll remember to change your machine back to straight stitch. And remember, a longer stitch length than normal. Why a longer stitch length than normal? Because when you have a longer stitch length, you are putting more thread into each stitch. More polyester thread that stretches. Look here, thread that stretches. And I also have a video on which thread to use. Do you see how this thread stretches? So if you have stretchy thread and a longer stitch, you have negated the possibility of that popping when it's stretched. So there's my first row, and now I have to do my second row. And I'm doing all of these starting and stopping at what's going to be the center back. So here do you see from this distance, I can just visually eyeball the middle of that. But again, I'm going to change my seam guide. Do you see what a wonderful doohickey that is? All right, and needle down on again. One hand in back, one hand in front. Stretching it so you're not sewing over any puckers of fabric. Back to the beginning. Over stitch a couple stitches. Support your work as you pull it out. Clip your threads, and there you are. So from the right-hand side, do you see how wonderful that looks? Mm. You're still not done. The next step is to take this to the iron. The very last step that you really cannot forget to do is to steam this elastic. All right, here I've put pins measuring how, how wide this is to start with. Now, with a good steam iron, and you have to coax it a little bit. If I'm not pressing down, you're just No, I'm it. just hovering. So here I've done this side. I'm going 
going to gently turn it over. Yeah, come by this pin. See how much smaller it's gotten already? Mm -hmm. And realize it's that twice, right? You've got two sides here. Oh, yeah. So I don't have this stretched around the end of the ironing board. I have it laying here in a double layer. Now on a woven fabric, it's my experience that this shrinks in even more. Now, here's another truism. Hot forgets, but cool remembers. So if you took this and held it up and stretched it now, you're gonna undo what you just did. You need to let it sit here and cool. But this shrunk down, that's almost an inch, so almost two inches once I steamed it. Isn't that something? Yeah. Yeah, when we would make these pants and then do this, everybody was just tickled pink because it looked like they had such small waist. <laughs> so that's Londa's way of putting in sport elastic.